Well, today we're in the house of, of Phil McKeown, who's kindly agreed to tell us about his, his life and times. And uh, Phil, maybe you're starting with your, 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 your family, yeah. your parents and your siblings, your brothers and sisters. Me, me, I was born in, in the parish of Somerville hmm. in 1930. 1930. 1930. And uh, I, uh, we, we, we moved from there, from Clondogan, we moved to Drumlargen oh. into Cole Parish. Right. And I went to Cole School. Right. Went, went to Cole School, finished my time there and went to work in different bits of jobs, but mostly then I went to work on the ESP right. in 1948-49. In right. I went to work on, and I was on the ESP for a few years and then I worked on the Land Commission for a good few years as well and on the, on the County Council. Right. And then I got married then and I came to live here in Umberstown. Right. And I am today. That's 62 years ago. Right. And I'm here ever since. So, be the looks of it, I'm not going to go any more. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'll stay put where I am, say. So that's, that's, that was my, well, my mother was a Donegal woman. She was from, from up the far, the farthest point nearly in Donegal. Right. And she came to work in Rainstown. Oh, right. And there she got married out of that to my father then. Oh, was he working in Rainstown at the, at she, the same time? She, no, he wasn't. He was working on the... I think he could have been working for local farmers and that kind of thing. And she, then there was five of us in my family. I was the second eldest. Five. There's three of them still, three of them still alive. Right. And Not living locally though. Pardon? Your brothers don't live locally, do they? No, the only brother I had, he died about, a, he died about, Five years ago, okay. he was eleven years younger than me. Right. He 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 lived in Dublin, and he he he's dead this four or five years. He had sisters as well. Uh, <coughs> my eldest sisters, my two I had two sisters married to two marmaids. There were two brothers, <coughs> and <coughs> say one of them is dead, four or five years as well. And the other one is living in Trim. Right. I have another sister living at Black Hall, oh. up near the near the Yeah, yeah. And uh, myself, I'm here in Umberstown. And do do you remember anything about your school days? I do. I went to cold school during the war during the war years. The day the day I remember being in cold school, the day the World War Two. Started. Is that right? 1939. Right. And Mrs. Giles was my teacher. Right. She was teaching me that time. Yeah. Mrs. Morton was there. There was only the two teachers. Right. Mrs. Morton and Mrs. Giles. Mrs. Giles was the principal. She, no, Mrs. Morton was the principal. Oh, sorry. Okay. And Mrs. Giles called us all in. She was after getting the word from someone or another that the war was started. And, 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 and she put a, a kind of an emergency, she kind of put a, an emergency thing in, the operation in the school. Oh, everything had to be curtailed, cut down, no waste, no spending money, keep right. your pennies. Right. Anyone would spare pennies, put it into that box, a little box you had on the table. Right. It'll do to get you a, a copy or help to buy a, a, a nib for the pen or something. Yeah. And times were rough. Sure. Times were rough and the school was rough. And immediately, that was school. immediately she understood that, that this was going to have a she, big impact she, on your well, life. They were kind of warned about it from, they must have been kind of warned about, about it from the department. Right. That it was coming. What, what would come? Yeah. If it did start, 
and everything was all oh, everything was was you couldn't throw away a piece of paper, you couldn't do more, and everything had to be made use of. Of course. You wouldn't cut the twine off a pa off off a parcel. When you got it and throw it in the fire, you opened the nuts if, if you were to be a week opening them. Sure. To keep it to tie up the next one. Of course. Yeah. And that was that was that went on for a good few years in the school. That went on for the best part of five years, from 1939 to, 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 to the 1944 or five to the war ended. Sure. And and and, and the the times were. The times were the kids going to school. There was no wealthy kid going to school. Every kid was the same. Yeah. Rich and poor, they didn't. There was no remark passed. All had to tow the one line. Sure. And that was it. Sure. And ever, everything then finally got by. Yeah. But that was there were the school. There were the school years. It was it was unusual for you that you were you started your school. Uh, at, you know, at the beginning of the war, and, yes. and so, so that's your memory. I remember it the whole four, four to five years of it. Right. I remember the day it started, in the 6th of September 1939. That was the day it started, that we got word that it started. Okay. It was niggling and niggling for a good while beforehand, but it finally took off then. Right, right. And that was it. Right. And, 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 and then, of course, Everton had to be rationed, there was rations. And there was very few cars on the road. Very few cars. Oh, where, the rationing now, what do you remember about that? So the, where did you shop? The shop, the shop had put out coupons. Right. There was coupon books, a book about as big as that. All right. And you got that book every so, 12 months, we'll say. And the, they were all paged along, and there was pages and pages of coupons and the, you had to produce the coupon for, for the groceries as you got it. Right. And when, 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 uh, when it was gone that was it but it only took the coupons accordingly yeah. in the shops. Yeah. Now I can remember your, it wouldn't be your grandfather would it? It could have been he had the petrol pumps. Yeah. Did you ever hear them talking about him? Of course yeah. And I can remember, I don't know, did you ever see the petrol pumps the old one? Ah, and yeah. you had the handle over and back, and the gallon of petrol went up into a glass bowl. Yeah. And when the glass bowl was full, it clicked, and it went straight down and into the tank of the car. And the other one, he stood pumping, and the other bottle, the other side stood filling. Right. And right. when it was full, one cut out the other, do you see? One yeah. operated the other. Yeah. No, I never saw that. You no, didn't see no, that. No. I wonder where did the go? Just sure the most antique route of them. Well, I suppose when the newer model of a pump came in, they, yeah. they, they, they took away that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. God, they were a big, big red and white, big red and white pump, standing up on a on, on a dome on the top of it. Oh, Jesus, one of them would be money wouldn't buy it today. So, so it wouldn't. If it was to be seen above, standing outside, I can see, I can see it above, in the very spot it was standing. Sure. The the petrol pumps was the petrol pump was there, and it wasn't so much water petrol; it was a gallon. Right. Right. And he pumped. He it was no electricity mm. in those days, and he had a little handle, and over and back a little rotor pump over and back and he pumped up and your gallon of petrol went up and into this glass ball and it clicked the minute it was full and down into the tank and the other one started he started pumping and the other one started filling right and all only one got i think it'd be about two gallon yes that would be your amount sure and he had that he had that there that petrol pumps was there and just over another little bit there was a horse scales. Mm. You never seen it. Ah uh, yes, it was there up until yeah. The six sixties or that there. Yeah, yeah, the horse scales. Mm. You pull your, your chart up on it and there was two little moles in it. metal moles cut out in it. Right. And the horse brought the chart along, do you see, in the two wheels, and the wheels went into these two little metal moles 
had said on the hell it. Do you see? But mm. they didn't have them too high, so the horse could pull them out of it again when he'd be wet. You lifted up the front of the horse you, and put a stick in on the scales, a small stick, right. and, 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 and propped it up. Okay. And you weighed, he, he weighed you inside. So that would be hay probably, would it? Hay or whatever, or corn or whatever. Okay. And you could, you'd have to wear the car then. Empty, yeah. yeah. Come back and wear the car again and take some track from it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, they, 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 they were rough times, and they were all times around Summer Hill. Sure. Do, do you remember anything more about the rationing and 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 what did you get in the in in the? Shop? Well, it was bread, butter, tea, sugar, all classes of stuff was rationed. But you would you would have your you would make your own bread, wouldn't you? And you'd have your own butter, would you? You would. Well, most people would. Mm. Most people would. You buy the flour and the wheat. Yes, and then the butter came in this big wooden box. Fifty-six pounds of butter would be in the box. Right. And this big and that would be in the shop there, and you, everyone got the supply of that in and out. But the coupons was for tea. The half, the tea was the biggest thing. Half an ounce of tea. Right. For each individual. Right. For the week. The, for the week. Mm. And the tobacco. The tobacco was in the big bar, do you see? And the, it was on the counter there. Oh, the homes it was a great place for tobacco. And, and they had one of these anchor shaped leaves. Mm. And a handle, wooden handle in it, and it'd go down on it, and just one snake, and it'd bring the two ounces, one ounce. See, the ounces were marked on the bar. Sure. On the bar, a hard black tobacco. Right. Two ounces a week. Right. Was the, was the rations. Right. For each man that would be smoking a pipe. Right. And I'd take around 20 cigarettes in the week and that's all you'd get. You wouldn't and sometimes the rations would run out and some would get none at all. Right. And then the war would start. <laughs> there'd be a war there'd be a war in Germany and there'd be a war in, in the shops. <laughs> over oh there used to be murder over the rations. Right. Even paraben oil. Right. You'd only get a gallon I think of paraben oil and put a, put the lamp for the Lamp in the kitchen, right? And and, and that's all you get. And this was a coping as well. There was a coping for everything. And you you do what? Would you do anything else with the paraffin oil? Would you have a stove or anything like that? Well, you would. You could. You could. Have, there used to be oil coal. Well, then, as times went on, the the paraffin oil, whatever happened, started to get a little more plentiful, but the petrol didn't. Right. If you know what I mean. Mm. It was there were even lads t attempting to drive out of cars on paraffin oil, right? And 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 there's, there'd be an oil stove, this side coker. Right. You could uh, co two big burners in it, and you lit them up, and the heat and you'd sm you could smell the paraffin oil off the bread the next day, and you ate and the fumes of it would be going everywhere. So the old burners would get dirty, do you see? And so smoke. Smoke and yeah. fumes, and then you go into the house where there'd be one of them, and sure you'd be, you'd be, you'd be nearly suffocated. <laughs> but oh, oh Jesus! It was a terrible, it was a terrible setup. Oh, when you'd be very young, nine or ten year old, twelve year old, you wouldn't pass on your remarks on this. The bread no was black. The law was a black law. You see, there was no in, the ingredients of the flour was bad. I think it was Indian corn, was it? It was it? Indian, yeah, and, and the, the, the loaf that was produced, there was no slice pans in those days. Right. There were before the slice pans, the loaf, mm. the big loaf of bread and a hole down in the top of it. And God, when you'd cut the loaf, it would be jet black inside. Really? The flour and that and that. Yeah, it didn't do you any harm. But we got after a couple of days or a day or two when the law would be cut. 
and, 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 and when you'd go to cut the next slice off it, be Jesus, you'd nearly want a angel grinder to go down through it. It'd be that hard. God. Yeah. That's what you'd want a chainsaw to cut it. God. But the, the, everyone, everyone got by. Of course. Of course. In a shock and slow motion way. Yeah. That's what I do say to this crowd here today. Jesus, if you said to go, go up to summer hell or go into Tremor, go to any of the towns longer, you'd be half the day going maybe on the horse and yard. And, and you wouldn't be saying, hurry up or we'll never be there. <laughs> there was none of that. <laughs> Whenever you'd get there, you'd get there. Sure. And you put up with it if you were late or if you were an hour late. So be it. There was nothing you could do about it. Sure. The world was moving that bit slower. Sure. Today is a rat race. There are cars out there, little cars out there, and they'll go out that gate. They'll go out that gate there, when the women and that. A bat out of hell wouldn't go as quick as them, out the gate. And you see them there. <coughs> Shock and sorrow. Going back to your school days and, and your, your family and home and, and all of that, um, had you any particular pal at school that, that you remember? Well, yes, there was all, there were, we would kick football when we'd have a football. There was different lads in the school. Ah, oh, yeah, they're nearly all gone, Paddy Daly, they're nearly all gone up there now. Mm. They, all, they were all, Paddy Daly was a, was a great athletic kind of a fella. Right. He stayed there last year. Yes. Up at, he lived up at, at Jaredice. Yeah. He was the smartest individual in the school. Right. He had the brain and he had the speed. Mm. He, 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 you never could catch him. Oh. Never. No matter how you... Th no one could catch him. He was like a deer when he'd get out. Uh, he, he'd jump. He could jump off him. I often, often wonder he didn't wind up in some of the big sports fields. Oh. He, he was that fit. Sure. Yeah. Great, great character he was. Mm. Uh, do, do you have any memories of Christmas and Santa Claus or anything well, like that? He, yeah. You'd be watching Christmas. Christmas was in just as exciting that time as it's today. Oh, right. You'd be watching, but you wouldn't get a terrible lot. Right. You, 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 you. And what sort of a build-up would there be to it for children? <coughs> no, there'd be a good build-up in the school. There'd be, a, there'd be holly and decorations and all the, that type of thing would be put on the same as ever. Right. And the Christmas prayers, of course, would be taught to you. The, the Christmas prayer should be for a week before Christmas and then be a week after Christmas or a week after you're going back after the Christmas holidays. Yeah. The Christmas prayer should live on. Right. And you, you, you added them on to your usual prayers for a good while after Christmas. Right. And that kept the atmosphere of Christmas in it. Of course. Together. Mm. You had to say these prayers. And, mm. That kept the thing that you knew that, and when you stopped saying, you knew Christmas was gone of course. for another year. Mm. And when you started up at the end of the year again, you started, you knew it was here again. Yeah. And there were the memories of Christmas. And Santa Claus, was there any Santa Claus at that time? Or? Oh, there was. Right. There was. There was. There was the same thing about Santa, and he he, he lived longer with the kids than today. The kids today, the minute Christmas Day is over, they don't believe in Santa anymore. The kids. That time they believed him in the whole year round. Yeah. The, the, he, couldn't put, he couldn't be put out of their mind. Sure. Different story today. Oh, sure, you see little things dark out and saying, there's no Santa. Another way to go, I guess. But, but it was really, really a big deal for you and your brothers and sisters. It would yeah. be a big time. A lot of excitement. And the midnight Mass was an excitement. Right. You want to Midnight Mass and there'd be a foot of snow out. And that would be from Cool, going to oh, Cool Church, is cold, it? Across the cold. Okay. And there'd be a foot of snow out and you hear the snow crunching under your feet. And maybe you wouldn't have great shoes on you either. And you'd hear the snow crunching and the cold, the cold at the chapel. 
Right. And the call, there was no heat in DC. No. And then there was only the candlelight yeah. in the church. Right. There was no ESP in those days. Sure. That was years before the ESP came. Sure. That was, there was, then when all these other things came, when such an ESP came, it was a shock and break through. You know, to, to see you come in and instead of coming in with a sup of paraffin, I used to pour into a low lamp. You come in and you put your finger on the switch and you had a light. You know, great, great. Big, that was a big step forward. Of course. Go out to the yard. I threw you in at the deep end. And so you had to introduce yourself and break the ground. Oh, you no, got in anyway. You yeah, got in. Oh, yes, Harry. Well, he's he's a no. Half, as Charlie, old Charlie, as Charlie Ash used to say, half the lazy tells you is not the truth at all. Not a bit of it. Not, <laughs> yeah, not so, a bit of it. So but, he'd, he'd but, be able to tell you, go back about uh, Langford's and that will... Absolutely. Yeah, give it... We're on candid camera, so I've got a lot so far. And oh, I'm not on that now. More to go. You are, absolutely. You yeah. have to be yeah. interviewed as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's... so you're gathering a good bit, are you? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. no. I went, there was a, a thing at in and Trim, a celebration at in at the banks and the wine buying there a couple of months ago, one Sunday, and there was, there was a handout done with all the names. Right. And oh, it's some place, you know, you bring it home and you put it somewhere. And it gave all the areas then... You know, so I don't know who who organised it. I know Cantwell was involved in it in Trim, and uh, there was a few good few good few turned out. But then you see, it was a little bit political as well. It was kind of uh, the Republican end of it didn't want it to be honoured. Oh right. So there's nothing in this country without bringing politics has to. And what 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 remembrance was this now? It was uh, the 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 war. Remember, members of the First World War. Oh, I see. Yeah. There was a there's a monument to, to it, and then uh, you know where the boat is at the at the bridge there, the new bridge crossing the bayonet at the roundabout. Sure, I've seen, seen it, yeah, yeah. And just uh, who was it? Yeah, that shot there at the unveil, and they were supposed to talk, and why we were talking among ourselves while everybody else was was uh, given to that. Your man from uh, RTE came down. He does talks on, on these things. Oh, he's big into history. Not the lad now you had in Summerhill, some other fella, Duncan. Miles Duncan. Oh, great. Yeah. I missed that actually, I was away, but yeah. That's two years ago now, is it? Oh no, well, that was only when. I said it was only about six months ago. Right. Okay. Less than six months. It was, I know it was, it was a bloody wet cut. It was in the springtime. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I get the, if I can find a little bit of a handout that was on it, uh, I'll uh, give it to you. Sure, sure. Yeah. So do you get anything out of them? Oh, we're, we're motoring away. Oh, you're fine. Listen. Thanks, Noel. So that that was that was Christmas, and uh, you're t talking about the electrification. But, um, that made a huge difference to your life. You were saying where, where um, you know you flick a switch rather than fooling around with a with a the paraffin. With a par oh, paraffin. Jeez, the paraffin was with. No matter what you ever went for the rem remainder of the night or the day. You could the smell, smell of paraffin oil would be on it. And you could wash your hands a thousand times and the smell of paraffin oil would be still on you somewhere. Yeah. Oh, the paraffin oil was it. Was it. And you're putting it into the lamp and you're cleaning the globes. These glass globes, they were hard, hard to get sure. during the war time. They, 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 they'd crack in, 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 in a foggy evening in during the winter. We say in December evening. January evening, foggy, frosty evening, when you'd light the lamp, you could only barely light it, or the globe would go in bits. Sure. You had to turn it up then, there was a little twister on it, and you turned it up as cordless, the globe heated up. Hmm. And the globes was, and then to clean them, they'd get black sure. with the paraffin oil, and they'd let out no light. And they had to be cleaned, and sure as often the women would be cleaning them, and as often as not to go and mix in their arms. Yeah. Oh, there was nothing, only, only, only obstacles. Obstacles. Any special stories you can remember from your youth? Any, you know, to do with your family or, or the oh, I, lads at I school? Think or? The, I think of them, I can't, they're not, they're not coming. Sure. The, 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 
What about dancing? When you start your first dance, and well, the whole hall up there, the hall up there in 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 in, in for the old church. Yes, yeah. now that was the hall. Mm. That was nearly the only place you could go to. As far as the bike would bring you, right. it'd be there, and that would be packed. Right, we dances there fairly regular, nearly every Sunday night, and then they st they started to move on to carnivals. Right. Carnival started to be here, there, GA, and that would be getting the, running the carnival and they'd be running dances. And they, that kind of took away from the halls a bit. And then they started in the halls, mm. started to improve. Right. And, and, do, and done up. And you had it to bigger places such as Trim or you, some of the other places. You know, Bit of variety, you'd be moving around all the time, you, you know. But with old places get worn, the one old places that get worn now. <laughs> what the hell with this? We tell you where's a great place, and such a place is a great place. God, it, 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 it was a great night, mm. and you'd be going at that to that, and it mightn't be a great night, and that's the way it worked. It worked along. And what sort of music would there be? Who would they, had, they had the Kit Kelly's band, Kit Kelly's Christie's father had a, had a, had a, had a band and Paddy Button was a, an accordion player and Jack Connor, have you ever heard of Jack Connor? He yeah. was a summer hell man though. Jack had, had the drums going. Oh, there'd be plenty of noise. Just it'd be plenty of noise. <laughs> be as noisy as today with, with the bands. Sure. Uh, that's the way they travel round. So you were saying you did did some farm work and then you were with with the ESB for a while and the with, Land Commission? With the Land Commission then and I was with the council and the I council. wound up in here. Married into this place. Here. I see. Okay. And I'm here ever since. Sure. And that's it. That's 62 years last week. Yeah, they think married. Right. right, yes, good for you. 62 years. Good for you. Great. Doctor, there was a doctor, there was a doctor, a young last, lady doctor in Summerhill. And I, was, I had to go to her this day anyway, and she was talking, and she, she how long are you married? She said, I'm married 60 years. Oh Jesus, she have had to look at a man sixty year I do myself in. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way she described it. Uh, uh, yeah. There's a lot, a lot to be said for for uh, your days. There's a lot. Oh, I, I, I tell you, I stuck on anyway. I stuck on anyway for better or worse, as the saying was. I stuck on and. Uh, it wasn't all sunshine either, I can tell you. Of course not, yeah. There was, there was many there up there. Uh, you know, you, you'd often, you'd often just wonder would you be better off in, in, in a good full-time job, a pensionable job or something. When you'd finish up, you'd have something at the end of the day and you'd be stuck in a bit of land and you'd be trying to milk a few cows and a few calves or a few pigs or something. But there'd be times now it would be very tight squeeze. Of course, of course. Oh, but the only thing, it seems to be the same for everyone. It, it was. And as it come back, your turn would come round again. Yeah. And you st as, as, as long as you stayed in, hmm. as long as you stayed in, you'd have a hope of coming up. Sure. But if you got out, you were gone. Of course. And cleaned out. I, if, if, you, if, you, if you sold out, and got rid of the mall and says I'll set the bloody lot, you were gone. Yeah. And you'll not get back. No way back. No way could you get back. So I stuck on. Hmm. I stuck on and it, it came middle and go then after a bit. Different the times got better. Doubt it out the times are better today. True. They're, 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 there's no, there's no panic and today, if you, if you didn't go out today, well, you could go tomorrow and pull up for the loss. But that time you had to go the whole time. Sure. You couldn't miss nothing. Sure. You had to be there on the job the whole time. And uh, 
Oh, the ESP was nothing. It was nothing. And when the ESP started, I didn't start on the on the road like the vacation and the, I started on the main lines. Right. And the main lines was tough. The main lines was tough work. There now were the big lines that was bringing the power from Dublin to Donegal to Ballyshannon and from from uh, Allen Wood and Kildare back into Dublin. Right. And you were on them big main lines putting up the steel correction right. things. Right. That was hard. Right. I went to England. Uh, it closed up anywhere. It closed up a bit in the sometime in the beginning of the fifties, and I went to England to do a, a, a lad that was on DSP. This fella, he, he got an ad in the evening paper. We were in digs. I was in digs in Dublin at the time, and he read it out that there was ESP workers wanted in England. Right. And the God, he, he, he answered, he was a fella from Cabin, and he answered it anyway, and uh, he got a reply in about a week s to go for an interview. Right. And he went over, and that he'd have to have, a st he'd have to have at least ten of a star. Right. If he could get lads uh, that he could bring with him. Yeah. So we got it. We went to England anyway. Oh, it was rough. It was even worse than it was here. <coughs> Not a bit of devil. Not a bit of devil. Nearly wages and everything was nearly the same. Really? That yeah. was in the beginning of the fifties. Right. Oh, a horrid rough time. But the, there was here. There was a few cork men, head, head men on it on the SB. There were linesmen and there were engineers mm. and, and there were they trained with the Germans below in Arden of Russia. Right. When the ESP power came here first. Right. They, they, they trained with the German when you train with a German you remember what, what he put into you. Oh they were savages. Oh they were savages. They, they, they'd stand over you in a hole of water and you'd be digging the hole to get the pole down into it in the depth of winter and the half the pole, the whole half full of water submerged and it didn't matter to them whether you got wet feet or wet to, to soak to the neck as long as the poles were up. Right. That was their aim. Hard times. Hard times. Yeah. And, the, and the digs was fairly hard. You were in digs here and there throughout the country, everywhere. And ESP men, I can tell you, hadn't the best of a reputation for the landlady. Right. Because they used to, some of them used to pay her, and they'd be gone on the line, they'd be gone on, and they'd be gone on to new digs, and they wouldn't go back to pay up their bills, and none of them wanted taking you. Right. They did, you hadn't, this reputation was brought down. Sure. And, and you were up against that. Sure. You see, and there was one used to leave it harder on the other, but that was it. It it it, it uh, become then a great job in the end, and it's a great job today. Mm. Anyone that's lucky enough to be on it, great job. Sure. No such thing. I was getting wet, staying out in wet. Sure. You you go home or you get into the cab of a lorry and you sit in it and poker game or something goes on. <laughs> How long did you spend in England then? I was in England from, I just stayed a, oh I could have stayed in it for 12 or 18 months. Right. Oh I didn't like to set up in England. I didn't, oh the digs, the digs on the ESB, they kind of had their own digs. Mm. They had these nests and huts, a galvanised affair, and they used to have the, have the lads used to stay in them. Oh they were wrong. Rough and cold. Right. Oh, dreadful conditions there. And they were all nearly west of Ireland, fellas. Big fellas, and they'd, they'd stay out, they'd stay out all night in the pub drinking. And they'd come in, and they'd come in, and yet that was your night's sleep finished. When they'd come in, they'd go make a feed, or put on a fry, or there'd be something, go, some, some shouting and bawling and the half jarred. And, and then in the summertime, in the summertime then, in the fine, fine summer nights or mornings, you couldn't stay in it with 
porter vomit. Oh my god. And, and, and sweaty socks. That's all you got. That was all that was all that was in all. I didn't I didn't rain too long in it. <laughs> I I kept my eyes open till I got out of it. But they stayed there, they didn't give a damn. They worked through that. Big men, big lumps of fellas that were from Connemara and everyone. So you was it after that stint then that you got married and, moved, was. and moved here? Yes. Right. And you, you were full time farming then? I did, I did. I walked a while I walked a while with it up there in Mead Lane in the quarry when oh. it started in the beginning. Right. I walked a while there for a few years and then <coughs> things started catching up with me here. This started then to get bigger here and the work up there started to get bigger. So I had to decide which one was I going to go to. I, I was I knew how hard it was to gather up what I had got here. So I didn't let it go. Of course. I stuck here. Hmm. Of course. You get a job, you'd have a better chance of picking up a job any time. You only got the chance of the farm once. That's all. Mm. That's well that's all. Only once. Mm. It's a one stop. If you slip or fall you're down. Yeah. And that's it. Can you remember, um, if you like, in, in the village and or, or anywhere you like, but uh, can you remember any of the people who lived, we say, as, as, as you go around the village, can you remember any of the houses, any of the people of your age group? I can. I can I remember uh, up where the barracks is now. Yeah. I remember most of them. I don't know a terrible lot now about them. Someone here has been my local post, if oh, you know what I mean. Sure. But I remember where the barracks is now. Mm. You might often hear them talking. There was a little thatched house on the corner going round now with the barracks there. Yeah. yeah. Judy Martin lived in it. Right. You ever hear them talking? I, I did Judy? indeed, yeah. Judy had a, sh a little shop there and a little thatched house. And I remember Judy Martin. Judy was, I think Judy was a Dublin woman. Right. And, 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 and. The soldiers was in Summer Hill at the time. It was during the four, it could be in 1941 or 42, during the emergency. Right. And the, the army drifted a, t a camp into, into Lankworth. Right. Into the, into the domain, and all this, the way up. On the Reverie Tree there was a big tent. And that was the Irish Army, of course. Oh, the Irish Army, mm. yeah. And the lorries and cars and armour cars and everything was really? there. And they were there for a whole summer, a whole long summer. And Judy, they used to let you in. You see, the kids in Everton would be like, the, there was a soldier on sentry at the gate all the time. He was, this soldier was at the gate and he had a, a steel helmet, do you see, or a tin helmet and a rifle. And of course, he was standing at the gate and he was browned off standing at the bloody gate all the time, but the kids used to be there and he used to mind the kids. He used to be knocking great crack out of them, do you see? And they wanted to get in and wanted to get in and you see, he couldn't let anyone in. This is the big gate that's there now, it was your house. Yeah. Because the only way he, the head fella came, asked to see, he came down, the head man in the army and to see to him, asked to see, I think you may let them in, to see, to see, you may let them in, to see what harm are they, are they going to do, to see, they're mad to get up to see the set up, up the camps all up along, to see, there's no use in us shouting every day looking for recruits for the army, to see, we won't let them in here now, to see, let them see, maybe some of them in a few years time would be mad to join up. It was a good idea, do you see? If you didn't promote from the ground, you weren't going to. He let them in, and they used to, kids used to go up, and sure, they used to have a great time in it. Judy wouldn't be let in. Judy says, says she knew De Valera in Dublin, when Dublin was Dublin, do you see? And, and she went to the gate anyway, and she wanted to get in with the rest of them. And you can't get in, to say. And so she I knew the, De Valera, and he, he, the Major was the head man over them in Summer Hill, his son. 
Oh, really? Yeah, he was the major in the army. Right. And he was the boss. Right. Do you happen and to remember his name? Ah. Uh, Do you happen to remember his I think, name? I think Vim, Vivi, Vivi. I think you're right, Vivian, I think you're right. Was his name. Mm. He was, he was the boss. And because anyway, she, she uh, Vim is up there, she, she, and if he knows I'm here, she, she, he let me in. Anyway, they let Judy in. The past no remarks, and it was a free for all after a while, everyone could go in. Yeah. And that solved that problem. Sure. You wouldn't solve the problem by keeping the uh, gang out and uh, the piling outside the gate. You know, we're all used to go round and watching them, and they'd be cooking, and they'd be cleaning their buttons. And, and do you happen to know why they chose Summer Hill? Why were they, why were they there? They, they had the other places as well. Right. They had a, they were in best outside Belaver as well in the field down there, oh. working and they used to work in the bogs that time. Oh. At the turf. Putting the turf and everything down there that time. There was a couple of hundred of them best in Belaver. Right. But <coughs> they were in Summer Hill anyway for a whole summer. Uh, they'd be shining their buttons there and polishing the rifles and pulling the things through the rifles and looking out through them and uh, there was a great bit of activity right. for kids. Of course. For kids now a lot. And that, that went on for started. They came there in the early month of May, and I suppose the start of September. Right. I think they came back they came back the second year, I think, as well. But the lorry the lorries and all used to be there backed up. These old board lorries, you'd see them in the films today. Right. And, and the little jeeps, army jeeps, and, and there, there was two hundred of them, I think, in, in summer. Right. Two hundred and fifty or something. Right. And had any work to do? Had they a project on? Were they? No, they used to march every day. They used. To, you'd hear them come and march, and, and you think there was only one fellow walking. You'd hear the the oh, one step, yeah. One step, and they used to march as oh, they used to march as far as Kilcock. And back again, and they used to march out the my road out near Enfield every day. Oh, that was that was the, they had no role of work on the run right. like that. They had, they had them there in reserve if they needed them. Right. They might come then. After a while, they might come maybe and pick twenty lads out of it. You know, pick twenty men out of it and bring them. Right. They had them doing work, different types of work. They had them on, on they had them on the, they had them on the hydro dams. The, the electricity was right. starting at that time. Up now in Ballyshannon, <coughs> up in Ballyshannon, where the hydro there, electricity is goes there. The supply from there. They, they had them working on that. Right. Now they had a camp up there, Finner Camp right beside it as well. Mm. It's still there. There but the soldiers done most of the labour and work. Right. Right. And they done most of the labour and work on the bogs as well. Right. They had them doing all that kind of work. Mm. The the like for the stage you mentioned. Do you have any stories about that place and Devil much I I know it. I, I know about it. Never really much. I never remembered it nearly any other way than it is today. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember the big. I remember the old the ruins, <coughs> the big house in it after it being born. I remember being in it and down in the old tunnels and on in the undergrounds. I remember all them. All, but them were all levelled in and, and and flattened out. Did Did you ever hear any stories about the burning? Why it was burned or anything? I didn't hear much about it only the McCardles were painters in it. And and they were going they didn't know about it till they were going to their work the next morning, they were going in across and they got the heat put them back. Okay. The flames, the heat coming through the woods, they didn't know what it was where the fire was. And it was well, but there was no one in it. Only the housekeeper. The, the, I think the night it was burned. Okay. They took her out of it. 
the boys took her out and brought her down to the house in the yard, the herd's house, and told her to stay there. Took her at gunpoint, because there was no need to. She'd have went anyway, and then they burned her. You see, it was going to be a, it was going to be a base for the British Army, for the, for the British Army. They were going to make a head, there was rumour that they were going to make a headquarters out of it, out of the big house, a headquarters there. And, and, and that says they wouldn't, that it wouldn't be there, that they burned it. Can you, any of the other, like Dangan, can you, do you know anything, hear any stories about Dangan Castle and Dangan Estate? Well, there's enough known about it nearly as it is now. <coughs> no, I don't know much about the, the castle now at all, only it was part of Langford's too. <coughs> One time, at the Rowley Estate, or, well, the, the, they were all the one, like it. Be all the what the Wellingtons and all them they were all of the ones aristocracy would you call it, right. and, and, and uh, that's why they were so close to each other. Mm. But Langford, I sure I seen photographs of the house of what? Did you ever see it? Uh, I have, yeah, yeah. You have it. Yes, huh? yeah. Good man. Mm. That's great. I've seen his photograph of it somewhere, someone's house, and that's Lord Langford. Yeah. 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 Magnificent building. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it on a, on a, on a so I've seen it in ruins then, when it was burned. It was standing just the very same, only windows and everything was burned out sure, of it. Sure, sure, there's, sure. There's nothing in it, nothing there today, only briar. briar. Yeah. 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 As you as you work your way around the, the, the village, Yeah. Uh, you're, again, we're we're still talking about the forties when you were a, a young man, a young boy. What, what do you remember? Any of the houses? Any of the people? Well, there was the a village? lot of people in it. There was there was a lot. Of, there was George Barner there and Tom, and there was Fitzsimons. There were related. Mrs. Fitzsimons was a sister. Yeah. And um, to to the best of my knowledge, Mrs. Fitzsimons was a sister. That's right. A Tom Barner. And she lived down at one end, down now where Eddie Drum lived. That's right. And then there was a yard that lived in it, Tully, Yard Tully. That's right. Lived in it, and there was a lot of houses back then. Mrs. Allen lived up at the other end of it, and Hannes lived in the corner. Mm -hmm. Paddy Hannah, he was a Belfast man. Right. He lived there in the corner. He 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 was a greyhound a greyhound man, right. and he was the only man that had two cars in Summerhill. He had a van and a car. Right. He had a van for for bringing the greyhounds, a little Austin van, right. and had a car as well. And he lived there until it was knocked down, and Christy Donahue I think bought it and built the house in it, sure. and it's gone and it's rebuilt again. Mm -hmm. And all, all them were, I remember them all, old houses there, round about there, and up along. Any characters you remember, any, any, any lads that were well, well, we notable? Like, I don't, I just want, they won't come up in my mind. Sure. You remember, beside Hannes, and the, there was a blacksmith's, wasn't there? Pat McLaughlin, yes. I often went to him with a horse to get shot. Okay. Shocking contrary man. <laughs> oh, shocking contrary man. Part, part, he, he was, he, he, he'd be idle, but he'd give you the impression that he was on top of his head. He, he, he'd, you'd go in with the horse, and you'd, you, you come in at, up at the, at the top and round the backs of all the houses. You see, you had to come right down the backs of all the houses. Yeah. There was a right away down to him, to right. the forge. And he had the forge down there in the corner. And Pat is here you come and anyway and he'd come out and he'd have the hammer in his hand, the big hammer in his hand. And he'd say, Not today, he'd shout, nor tomorrow. He couldn't do the horse and he, he wouldn't have any to do. So he'd bring you back the next day. 
and if he was in good humour, he'd get the horse shot. Oh, he was shot in country. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ in my, he was a chap, by the way, by the weasel. Uh, and he uh, later became the postman, did he? He did, he, yeah. He, uh, the horse went. The horse, the tractor took the put him on. He, he says, he says that he was going up the my road on the bike and he had the post bag on the front of the bike on a carrier. And it was a real windy day and the wind was coming down, the storm was coming down the my road. And Pat was trying to get up and ride on the bike, and the bike was standing on the road. He couldn't get going. And some lad flew by on the loud tractor. Ah, oh, to see you, so and so, yeah. It was you that put me out of business. The horse, do you see? Yeah. The tractor took over from the horse, and Pat had to go and get a job from P and T. <laughs> oh, he was shocking. Content. Tom Barner went with the post too. Uh, no, George. George went with the post. Right. Good way. <laughs> he lived here at uh, he lived here at uh, at White's. Yeah. In a little thatched house in there. The Duffy's, do you remember them? Duffy's. There was the schooner Duffy. He lived in Balagorta. He went up, he got a land commission place and there was Bill. No, no, Mick. He was another postman. Right. Mick Duffy was a postman as well. Right. And then there was another brother, I don't know where he was in England or somewhere. And and, and they lived there with the chocolate room for the Dardy's chocolate factory is in one of them houses. Right, right. He lived there. Right. And then Barney O'Neill lived over for Tom Fields's. He lived there in that house now at Tom Fields. Mm. And the, uh, that house ended there. There was no garage or anything there that day, Muddy. Just the, the house. Mm. Barney lived there. Did then he, 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 he went out of there, he sold it, and he built the house up the at the, the up the Rock Malane Road. Right. Do, do you remember the the three big houses then? Who lived in those? The, in, the big the... houses then. Master Cogarty lived in. Master, the first little small ones were knocked. Grehens lived there. Right. Grehens lived in the little low houses. Mm -hmm. And the next was Master Cogarty's. He was the schoolmaster. Was there a dispensary there, one of those? That's small... right, in Grehens. And I remember being in it. Right. I remember being in the dispensary. Dr. Corby. Right. Was was the was the doctor in it at the time? Right. And he he used to have a dispensary there twice a week. Right. There, and he lived then in the house after Master Hogarty's, the big house. Right. He lived in them. He owned them. He owned the two houses there, did he? Them two houses. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then H Higgins has bought one of them. Right. Remember one of them? He was the children's man. Yeah. Mira. De, yeah, they went into one of them then, and or should they gone where now? They're, they've gone kind of derelict a bit. You know, they're not what they were that time. They were very well kept uh, in those days. Okay. When Corby had them, though, Dr. Corby, he, he used to he used to have a... He had a little car, too. There was very few cars in Summer Hill. He had a little, little lost car, a small right. little car. Right. He'd only bring it out of a bad day. Hmm. He'd go on the bike of a fine day. Right. He says it was good for his health. Right. And he, he had a lovely sport, sports bicycle. Right. And he'd go on the bike and bring his bag and all in the back of it. But, uh, I remember my mother and dad used to go to the dispensary there in Grehens. Oh, a little bit further up than the Miss Christie's. Yeah, they were in the in the in the first uh, next to Bruton's garage, and then there was Mary Kelly. You remember her? You remember Mary? And round the corner then she had a big she had a big flower yard mm. up to Phyllis's, nearly to Phyllis's. Mm. She had a big flower yard and up along there. Oh, they got there there. 
Mary Kelly was a big, big age when she died. So she was. Right. Do you remember the Gogarties then? Remember that the, there'd be a kind of a relation. All oh, right. And my woman here, yeah. I see. Right. To be cousins, active cousins. Right. The Dowds. Right. Dowds, they were, they were related to them here. But Phyllis Archer, the whole lot of them, there was Janie and Manny. They'd be aunts now with Phyllis's. Janie and Manny and Mary. Right. There was three sisters. The Mary now lived a lot of her time on the Mill Road. Right. She had a house, just a bit of land was sold there last year. And she had a bit of land there and she had a thatched house. And of course the thatched houses started to fall and she went up to live with them in Summer Hill. Right, right. right. And you mentioned Barners already and George. Yeah, don't and, you? Uh, yeah. Do, in, in the middle of the cottages then, uh, after after Midlachlan's, do you remember who? After Midlachlan's, I think, was Burton's. Yeah. And I don't know who was this, was the next, was it Marty's? I don't know who was in the, the next one, mm. after Burton's going down. Right. The Rallans were there at one stage. Rallans was the first one. Next to Pat Mid after Pat Midlock. Oh. Well, Pat Midlocklands was the first one. And then Allen's. Right. And then Burton's. Right. And then I don't know who was the next. Forget them. Right, sure. Forget them. Sure. Yeah. But for Simons this was at the end. At the end. Now it was an end. At the very last one was for Simons. Bar Barney for Simons and, and Yeah. And Harty, yeah. And Hart, yeah. Mm. They were living there. And way down at the other end where the chocolate factory is now, that was Nelson's, was it? Nelson's and, and, and Duffy's. Duffy's. There was two houses there or three there together. And and there was Bartles lived in it at one stage. Now you mentioned the Bartles there in the, the First World War. I'll take you somewhere yeah. in, man. And it could have been out of that family. All right. The part, it could have been in one of them houses, part of Right, right. Yeah. Um, we we spoke about it earlier, but not for the yeah. not for the benefit of no, the camera. No. You you had actually, there were four members, uh, of your family, yes. three uncles and a cousin, yes. a, a cousin of theirs. Yes. Who served in in the First World War. That's right. Uh, that that's an amazing record. It's a lot of them to, to go to the war, but I had no other option. Of it course. Was, it, in other words, you have to have to say it, it was poverty that put them out. Sure. Bar for the first fella, Paddy, that joined the Dublin Fusiliers in 1906. He was a, he was the brainiest of the whole lot. Or up there he was the brainiest, because I often heard my father say it when... when, when uh, People had get letters and everything up around that area in the bog and up there. They were very poor, backward people. And when they get letters from America or anywhere, he'd have to read them. Sure, sure. He, he used to read them for them. So he had a, a, an, an office job, so He so had a handy job in the army. Right. He had that handy job in the army. When the war was over, he never came back. He went out to India. His boss brought him out to India, yeah. and he never was heard tell him All right, after right. that. That was Paddy. That was Paddy. But you he, also, yeah. he 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 he'd have been born in about nine in about eighty in hundred right. and eighty. Right, right. About eighty in hundred and eighty, he'd have been born. Right. So he'd have been twenty in his early mid twenties sure. at that time. Sure. And then there was also John, John McKeown. Yeah, well he right. he lived he lived in he lived in Ratmalay. Oh, he's not that long dead. Right. He's buried in Kill. Right. But all he he got a lump of money. He 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 got a lump sum for his hand, right. and, and and I can tell you, didn't put it to great use. <laughs> well, he thought so. Uh, he thought he did. Oh, he he invested it well. <laughs> oh, he, he, oh, he was a fellow that couldn't do wrong anyway. 
you mightn't talk to him. My father used to be on him, do you say? Uh, my father wouldn't have his way of life at all. And my father used to be getting on to him when we did meet up about the shocking man and shocking man, and would you not do this and would you not try now and do that? He had two daughters, by the way. He had two daughters, he was marrying her two daughters. And oh no, oh, he, he was he, he, he was capable of uh, uh, being Michael D. Higgins. So he was. <laughs> you would all. They didn't see, I tell you, I can tell you. Uh, so you think that the lump sum he got uh, when he when he left the army didn't last very long? He, 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 he had a royal old time on it while it lasted, and that wasn't very long. You were right. There was also a, a a Martin, but he was a cousin of theirs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he he served in Flanders as well. He did. Yeah. And right, so you had Thomas, also Thomas McKeown. Yeah. Am I right there? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Tom, he was in in the in the in the artillery artillery regiment. Oh, okay. Yeah. And again, he survived. He, he, had, he, he did. Had, right. He survived. He died in nineteen. He died in nineteen. Fifty-four. Right. He died down in. He lived down in Mayo. Now I never seen him, but he lived down in Mayo. Right. Was married down there, right. but no family. Right. He lived down there. So it really, uh, apart from John, who had a had a bad hand injury, yeah. uh, in, in the in the war. Yeah. The 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 rest of them survived and and. They just survived. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I heard I heard Johnny saying. Johnny, we used to call him, this is the, 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 the fellow that knew it all. I heard him say the day of the surrender in Flanders. The day the, there were stones, uh, loads of hush, loads of stones along the side of the road, like what they used to have here long ago, for steamrolling into the road. Mm. There were roads, the same as here. Yes. And the, they came out of the, this wildish place. A field, and the were the surrender was after the were after yet the flag was up or dropped. They said they sat on the Lord's stones. He says on the side of the road they were that fed up of it and tired and hungry. He says they were that browned up a war. They lay on the slept on the stones, and the Germans came the other side. And the first thing they started looking for after was a bag. Right. They were back to. Yeah. Cigarette. Cigarette. Give us a cigarette.